Ghibli with Kiambu. So let's assume this is the principality in Kiambu. He's the first to appear in that region. The region is virgin, nothing is happening. But when this principality appears, it doesn't do anything. It now gives authority to the power. The name power there is Exousia. Now these are these are these are angels, by the way, except this one. These are okay, even this one has a level of an angel. So these are angels. So the principality in charge shows up and is the one in charge and gives power of oversight towards the region. So the power is now given to the powers. Are we together? So what does these powers do? They begin to configure laws that are going to control that region. So the powers might say, as I give oversight in this region, God will never be worshipped. Yahweh will never be worshipped. Anyone that raises a church, the first law will fight them. In this region, marriages will never work. Anyone who tries to raise a family will fight that person. So they make laws, legislations concerning territories. This is equally true concerning even families. So there are laws, there are legalities in the atmosphere. And this one does not implement. Now this one gives the laws to the rulers. Now the rulers have a manual of operation. They rule. This is like parliament. They make laws. These are the people implementing. This is like the judiciary. They are the ones who now rule. If you obey our law, we attack. If you try to look like you're in Kiambu, you want to do a church, we gather. We attack that church. Because this region is configured by certain laws. You are in a family. You try to get married, we attack. Because there is a law, marriages will never work. It is written. That's why some of you, you attempt things. Some of you, you attempt things. And a grandmother shows up at night and asks you, who are you? Because you are trying to go against legislations that were made upon that family. Now, these are the legislators, sup supervisors. So they have the manual. They look at how people are doing business and the attack. But this one now, this one has spirits. Spirits that are wicked. And, and some of them have been deployed to rule Limuru. So you go to a town like Limuru, you realize it is configured in a certain way. Vijana wakifika 12 years, Fakim wanacha shule, wananza kutoka nyumbani, wanaza kufuta bangi. And you realize this has been the Asian pattern because the spirits are there territorially. And then you can see this one. This one is the ruler of the darkness. Because what can make this man to be powerless is when light enters and that is the gospel. So the first thing they introduce in a territory is godlessness. Makanisa is a area but they never teach Jesus. They never bring the light of the gospel because when darkness prevails, oppression is automatic. So that now in their darkness oppression increases i want to tell you there is a level of victory we enter not because of prayer because we know who we are there is a level of victory we enter not because of any sacrifice because of the light of the gospel that's why we must preach Sakatande, Leparando, Sibrataya, Acapola da Bastia, Rada Capo Sata Daba, Racapalia da Babo, even the ministry that you came unto us, Lord, we declare your praise, we declare your favor, we declare the life of the Spirit, we declare the life of the heaven, Asharanda Babosa, Reke Palia Rada Bababosa, Randa Bababosa. 
Give us grace in scriptures. Give us grace in prayer. Give us grace, Lord, in service. Raka balares. Elana makoria da bahanda. Laka pora da basia da da ba. Raka palia da la babosa. Raba shata la brana mama mo. We love you, King of Glory. We declare you everlasting love. We worship you, Master. You that is seated at the bless of glory. Arande de bo sayanda. Rako shata la bababo. You are the King of Kings. You are the beautiful King. Nobody compares to thee. No amount. Arande de bo skianda. Yila party of Kings. Upper Father, the glory that is given to the kingdoms of Kings that rule in the world can be compared to you. Nothing can be compared to you, Father. You are the King that ruled with power, with authority. Asharando si prada le manda dapa. You rule in daytime. You rule in nighttime. You rule, King of Glory. You cannot be limited by time. You cannot be limited by anything that limits. Arado shata le prada gapapa. You are the same God that healed the sick, and still you are the same God that gives life to men that are dead. You are the same God that gives salvation to men, and you are the same God that keeps on providing. You are the same God that sustains men, and you are the same God that anoints men. We surrender this evening to you to glorify you, to bless your name, to love on you, to say. That nobody compares to thee. You are amazing. You are so powerful. You are so great. You are so amazing. Raka babo si ala daba, ela daba si ana namande, ela rara bako si ala rara rabasa. Father, we love you. Father, we glorify your name. We worship you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. My beloved is the most beautiful amongst thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful amongst thousands. My beloved is you are the most beautiful amongst thousands and thousands. Yes, you are.
Messiah, Lion of Judah, I couldn't
worship to him I tell him father you reign you reign in power you reign in majesty we have no other God to worship you are the one that is holy you are throne in holy king of glory you rule in holiness and we bow before you yes you are holy holy is the Lamb. Lift your worship to him. upon the throne you are the lamb upon the throne we worship you lord you are the lamb upon the throne you are the lamb upon the throne you are the lamb upon and we worship you lord and we worship you You're the 
worship the king upon the throne. Twenty-four elders bow their crowns. They bow their crowns. They bow their crowns. Just to worship the king on the throne. The Peruvian protects you, God. There are kings There are kingdoms There are mountains And there are thrones Holy Yeshua We reign forever To His kingdom There'll be no end there are kings, ah. there are kings, there are mountains, and there are thrones. Holy Yeshua, we rule forever. To his kingdom, there'll be no way. There are mountains and there is road. Only Yeshua, we ran forever to His kingdom. There'll be no way to His kingdom. We reign forever Tell him To his kingdom We bless the name of the Lord. Somebody just lift up your voice. Sir. We make a prayer in this place in the mighty name of Jesus. We are in the week of the invariable proofs of the Lord. We are in the week of the invariable proofs of the Lord. The Bible says, and on the third day he rose again. And the Bible says, on the first day of the week, he began to show himself. He began to manifest himself to the children and to the disciples. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians.
Genesis chapter 15, from verses 3, the Bible says, and this is the message that we received, the message that we continue to preach to you, that it is written in scripture, that he rose again, and he showed himself to the 12 apostles, he showed himself to the 500 that gathered together with him, the Bible says, he showed himself to James, and the last of them that he showed himself to is to Apostle Peter, Apostle Paul, and he says, I am the least of them all, but with invariable proofs, our Lord Jesus, he is risen, he is seated on the right hand of the Father, he is has demonstrated his power even through our lives, and so therefore, in this revival service, we want to ascend in the place of prayer, and in the place of declaration, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 from verses 11 the one who descended has now ascended and he has granted gifts to them he brought captivity captive and has given gifts unto men the Bible says he has ascended above all the heavens and he is seated on the right hand of the Father the scripture says having authority over all things even of the angels and of the powers to come tonight as we are making prayers I want you to understand from the place of prayer we speak from Christ Jesus in him in his kingdom in his authority we have been given the right to make declarations above every power above every dominion in the rulership and in his reign we begin to announce with our voices in prayer that he is the king he is the king the king has won the king has won he won on the battle in the grave he won on the battle against his death he won on the battle in the head he ascended above all the heavens he has supremacy over all entities and so therefore in the name of Jesus as you are making your prayers you need to announce that Jesus is Lord Jesus is Lord Jesus is Lord let it be known in everything pertaining your life that Jesus is Lord the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 2 the same Jesus that you crucified is now risen and he is he has now become Lord and he has now become Lord and Christ the announcement of him being Lord is supreme authority over all things in the name of Jesus Lord you are king in our lives we announce on everything you are the Lord you are the ruler you are the king of kings and the Lord of Lords you have dominion and authority over all things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ let the Lord be exalted let the king of glory take his pressure of enthronement let the king of glory seat let it be known in everything pertaining your life that Jesus is Lord Jesus is the supreme authority in the name of Jesus Lord we bless your holy name Shaya Palakatos just a moment this is a revival meeting we are about to make prayers but I want to set a perspective of what we are speaking about let us go to the book of first first Corinthians chapter 15 we want to make some prayers first Corinthians chapter 15 from verses 3 I want to show you five dimensions in which the Lord Jesus because of his death and his resurrection what he has attained for us the Bible says moreover brethren I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you which also you received in which you stand the next verse the Bible says by which uh, which also you are saved if uh, if you hold fast the word which I preach to you unless you believed in vain 
for I deliver to you first of all that which I also received that Christ died for our sins according to scripture so one of the results that we have received because of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the remission of our sins the Bible says the next verse the Bible says and that he was buried that means when he was buried we were buried together with him and every victory he achieved in the grave is the victory that we have the Bible says and that he rose again meaning that when he resurrected the victory of defeating everything that holds the power of the grave the power of death the powers of of of, of realms and the powers that are in heavenly places he defeated all of them and I cannot even make it a better demonstration like how our apostle did it on Sunday but we want to make our prayers and then the Bible says according to the scriptures then the Bible says and that he has been seen by Kephas then by the 12 then the Bible says after that he was seen over by 500 brethren at once and of them the greater part remains to the present but some have fallen asleep then the Bible says after that he has been seen by James then by all the apostles the next verse the Bible says then lastly of all he was seen by me also as by one born out of due day due time now this is what this is what Jesus uh, this is what Paul is trying to say he is trying to prove the case for Jesus Christ that he came he died he stayed in the grave for three days as the scripture have said then the Bible says that with infallible proofs that in the days that Paul was writing this scripture there were numbers of men that had seen him first the 12 that had seen him then the Bible says then he was seen he was seen by 500 so that is 512 people then he was seen by James James is his brother that is 513 people then Paul said that there is another team that saw him which included him that he was born out of the due time now the invariable proofs that we have it is them that now have been born now we are the invariable proof we are evident that jesus lives the first evidence that jesus came died and resurrected is because there are other men who have been born in the nature of christ he said that if a seed shall abide alone and does not fall down and die it will abide alone but if it falls down and it dies then a prophetic word that is in the book of uh, psalm 68 and verses 11 then the bible says the next verse we are reading all the way to verses 11 now the, now this he ascended what does it mean but that he also first descended to the lowest part of the earth in the next verse the bible says he who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might feel all things now I, I need you to understand this let's go back uh verses 10 let's stay at verses 10 he said that the one who descended is also the one that ascended far above all the heavens that he might feel all things now I know we've been taught about realms and we've studied scriptures and we know that the Bible speaks about three heavens that there is the first heaven which includes the earth then there is the second heaven which we call the heavenly places where there is activities of spirits both the demonic and the they are angels as well then there is the third heaven which the Bible says that the highest of the heavens belongs to the Lord and the earth he has given to the children of men but when Jesus Jesus ascended the scripture says that he ascended above all the heavens so Jesus was positioned where God was this accession when Jesus ascended when he resurrected he got he went to the position where God was before the Bible says in the beginning God made the heavens and the earth I want us to understand this so that we can understand from the praise of our authority when we are making the prayer now the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning God made the heavens and the earth. The three heavens that we count are part of what God created. But because he existed, he is the causer that was not caused. Because he existed to cause the heavens to exist, it means that there is a higher realm than that is above the realms that we count as the heavens and so the bible says that jesus ascended also uh, also above far above 
all the heavens. So the reason of this assertion is because according to the book of Colossians chapter 1 and verses 18, is that he is the firstborn of all things, above all things, that he may have preeminence, supremacy over all things. That means that anything that is that, that has power over whatever level of faith you have, when you are in Christ Jesus, your level of faith becomes the level of his faith. Let me explain that. Paul writes in the book of Galatians chapter 2 and verses 20. And he says that I now no longer liveth. But the life I live, I have been crucified with Christ. It is, it is, it is no longer I who live it, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by, the, uh, by faith in the Son of God, who God loved me and gave himself for me. I want to explain this scripture. The Bible, Paul is saying that the, now, the life you see me living now in the flesh, I exist in a realm. But this realm is called in the, uh, 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 the Bible says, the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. In the Son of God. So he begins to open our eyes that the place of my authority, the place of my existence, I am dead when it comes to the things of the world, but I have a life that I live in faith. And this life where, I, where this life is instituted and the economy that operates in this life, it is in the person of Christ. Now the Bible says that Jesus ascended above all the heavens. So if you are alive in Christ, it means that you are alive now. If you exist, as Paul is speaking, it means that if Jesus is above all the heavens and your life is in Christ, then your life is positioned in him above all the heavens. So when we are making prayers and declaration from the new creation perspective, is that we don't pray from the energies of being a human being. We pray from the source of the life that we have received in Christ Jesus. That is why Paul takes a time to teach us and say, we know that the scripture says he came. We know that he died. We know that he, he resurrected. And we have witnesses of these results. Now, when we speak in this week of invariable proofs, it means that anything that establishes Christ, anything that gives Christ the glory must be seen and demonstrated through our lives so that we can be able to, uh, to prove as witnesses. Witnesses are bearers. They are bearers of evidence of what they are talking about. So if we bear the evidence of the dead and the resurrected Jesus Christ, it means that the platform of Jesus, whatever Jesus does, need to be seen working in our lives. Now, the Bible says, I now, uh, I now live in the flesh, the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, when you go now to the book of Ephesians chapter 1, uh, chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, and chapter 5, and chapter 6, we see the five locations. That's what I want us to see. Then we make a prayer. Now, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verses 19, I just want to show you the, these, these are things that we know, but because we want to pray, I want to lift up your faith so that we can make the prayer. The Bible says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believed according to the working of his mighty power? The next verse, the Bible says, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. So, Paul, the first thing Paul shows us a position in the heavenly places. But he needs us to understand when Jesus is seated there, what is below him? The understanding of preeminence and the understanding of supremacy is when a person knows his area of jurisdiction and whom he rules. If we will talk about supremacy, if we will talk about infallible proofs, we have to understand because the king of darkness or the spiritual realm is very legalistic 
The devil does not have a hundred percent right over anyone. No demon has a hundred percent right over everyone. But they lied on the ignorance of believers and men so that they can suppress them. But when you have the, the knowledge of what has been achieved for you, Paul says, I apprehend that which was apprehended for me. So when we know what has been achieved for us, then we can achieve it. The Bible continues to say, I want to show you something here. I know these are scriptures, this is a scripture you know, but I want you to open your eyes so that you can see something. Far above principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. So Paul writes down the things that Jesus rules over. So if whatever you are dealing with after the resurrection of Jesus Christ is coordinated by any power, is coordinated by any principality, is coordinated by, <laughs> by any dominion or has a name, then Jesus has the power over it. Then the Bible says, I just want to show you something. It's, it's exciting for me. And he has put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Now, Paul is telling the church of Ephesians, all this power that the Lord said to my Lord, sit until I make your enemies your footstool. All this power that was given to Jesus, he has given it to the church. <coughs> then the Bible says, verses 22, which is his body, the fullness of him who feels all things. So if he is the head, where he is seated, number one, we are seated together with him as he, his body. What is the meaning of this? We are the one who exercise the power of Jesus Christ on the face of the earth. If he has dominion, the dominion that needs to be expressed through the hands. That is why when the... Uh, when, when the writer of the book of Mark is writing, he says, now to them that has believed, you shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall be healed. Because the work of demonstrating the conduit that dispenses power is in the body side. The head gathered the power. The body exercises the power. Now, the Bible says, and he feels all in all. Let's, let's read the book of Second uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 2. And verse 6. These are scriptures we know. The first level is to understand the prince of our dominion. The next, the next thing, the Bible says, this is just showing us that we are together with him in this. The Bible says, and has laced us up together and made us to sit together in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus. The greatest understanding that we must have about the resurrection power is that not only have we been given it, we exercise it from a, uh, from a place. Let me, let me teach you something. Authority is invested in thrones not in men. Today, if you meet with a former president, he cannot be commander-in-chief of the armed forces since when he stopped sitting on that throne because authority is invested on thrones. So when the Bible says that we are seated together with Jesus Christ at the right hand of the Father or, or in the heavenly places, what the Bible is saying is that we are seated on the seat of authority. From where we are seated, we can exercise the authority that is given by that seat. The third place, the Bible speaks about our supremacy is in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 and verses 10. This is what the Bible says. I want us to make a prayer according to how the Lord will help us. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to the church, uh, might be known by the church to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. Now, because of the position of our city, one of the work of the church is to rapture principalities and powers. It is to speak to ancient Mountains, it is to speak to ancient altars that we have come to the realization of the Christ in whom we have believed and the position that we are seated. Our fathers, our ancestors would have been short-sighted to think that 
you are powerful because they did not know that a man can fly above a mountain for in their days the mountain was the highest of heights but now we are born as ones who have ascended with Jesus and we know that the mountain of Kenya is so small when it comes to where we are seated in Christ Jesus so we know of a greater power Then the Bible says, so what we will do as we are making prayers is to be direct and precise. If I am dealing with the principality of poverty that has found expression in my family, I can address it from the position of my sitting. You see, Paul Peter, Peter is a, is a, is a funny writer. When you read the letters of Peter, he acknowledges of the wisdom and the revelations that Paul carries. But when you read the revelations that are written by Peter, it is where we find the message that Jesus even preached to the dead. is that deep. So when Peter is writing in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3, the last verse, he says that Jesus has now ascended far above and he has authority over kings. Over kings, he has authority over... Check for me. Uh, the Bible says, the last verse, yes. The Bible says, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having been subjected to him. So when we say we are seated together with Jesus Christ, we need to understand that the things that we are subjected to him are subjected to us because we are his body. So when we command authorities, we command by the authority of Jesus. When we deal with angels of darkness, when we deal with angels that are expressing that which is not of God, we have the audacity because the one who has the power is the one that we have believed in and we are seated together with him. When we are dealing with powers, because powers have dimensions, when you are dealing with powers, you know the one who has the supreme power over all things. Now, the Bible says, to the intent that the church may speak the manifold wisdom of God to principalities and powers. Because the lecture on how to uh, manipulate powers was to a powerful demon, to a powerful entity in the, spirit, in the spiritual realm. Uh, uh, listen to this. is only the, the lecture they know. It is only to the power that they can be able to deal with. If it is a demon that deals with poverty, it is only know the rector of poverty. If it is a demon that deals with diseases, it is only know the rector of poverty. But when we speak about believers, where we are ascended, the creator of all powers, the one who has dominion over all powers, is the one who has rectured us. So when we now begin to deal with powers, we are not dealing, we are not subjecting them out of a place of ignorance. We are subjecting them from a place of understanding. Now the Bible says in the book of, let's go back to Ephesians chapter 3 and verses 10. Mm. The Bible says, to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and power in the heavenly places. Let me explain something. Every time a believer enters into a higher understanding of what Christ has achieved for him, what happens is that they grow in the place of illumination. It means that the degree of light they are carrying expands. And every time light expands, darkness decreases. So when we know, the Bible says that, and darkness did not comprehend. So when we know the, what God has achieved for us, the things that worked against us because of our ignorance, now do not have a place. The next place, the Bible speaks about heavenly places, is in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 10. From verses 10, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This is the understanding. When you are exercising power, you are not exercising your power. The Bible says, be strong in the Lord. The position, the seat of authority is in the Lord. Then when you exercise power, it is in the power of his might. So whatever degree you can be able to think and understand 
and believe in faith is the degree of power that God carries is the degree of power you exercise. Whatever your mind can consume, you know, like we, we speak about atomic bombs. There is a bomb that can kill one person. If you believe the power, the extent of the might of God is able to deal with a certain percentage because you move mountains according to the degree of your faith. Now, if you believe it, it can only move to a certain ex extent. It is how far you can move. But Paul is saying, according to the power of his might. So what is the wisdom? It is to agree in the fullness of whatever power God, the one we know and the one we, does, we do not know, and exercise it in and through our lives. That is the only way we can have invariable proofs. Because it is one thing to read on what is written by others on how they have encountered God. But it is better for you to encounter God yourself and exercise the, exercise the power of God yourself. Because there are days when you wake up in the middle of the night and you have nobody to call and you need to make a prayer. There are days when you are on the back of the corner and there is nothing you can do. So if there is no source of God in you, if you rely on another person to exercise God, then you will fail. The Bible says, if you fail in the day of trouble, your strength was small. But the strength that we have, it is the power of his might. Then the Bible says, uh, verses 12, uh -huh, verses 12. The Bible says, for we do not lessen against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of dark, darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So it means, this is what the Bible, this is what Paul is saying in simple word. When authority was given, right of rulership, realm of rulership, and evidence of our rulership, we were because of being ascending together with Jesus Christ, we were given another realm to rule. And this is the realm called heavenly places. Initially, God would come to deal with Adam in the Garden of Aden. But God is now dealing with us from in Christ Jesus, where he is above also all powers and dominions and authority. So it means for us to deal with God on his height, we must have the ability to ascend and go against powers, go against rulers, go against wickedness in heavenly places, and then from the position of God, exercise authority. So we rise in power, and we also descend from heaven with power. I want us to make a prayer. Yeah, I, don't know, I don't know what God, you have been believing God for, but from this revelation of the power of his resurrection, the power of our positioning, I want you to change and alter a few things in the spirit and be able to believe God in what he has believed. Some of us, we have had this gospel several times, but today something has just sinked in your heart and you have come to the understanding that the authority that is in Christ, the fullness of the authority of God, Jesus said, the same way God bestowed to me a kingdom, the same way I have bestowed to you a kingdom, and you shall sit with me upon the thrones, and you shall judge the children of Israel. What Jesus is saying is that the same way I, ex I exercise the power of God on earth is the same power I have given you without measure, without limitations. He actually says, <coughs> more than this shall you do. Kaya, greater works than this shall you do. Heavenly Father, we bless you. Kaya. Eshka ipaluzia. Ramendo ze eshke torila. Raze anto iperira kataya. Zevela eshkatara varatos. From wherever you are joining us from, I want us to exercise the power of God. And sometimes the Bible says, test me, test me, test me. Ask even of the things that are as high as the heavens or lower as the depth below the earth and you shall see what I can do. The Bible says ask for a sign and I shall give you a sign. Sometimes you need to wake up into that crazy faith where you begin to say Father, is it not written in your word? Is it not written in scripture that we have been laced together with Jesus Christ far above principalities powers, far above dominions, far, far above the things that continue to hold men. We now are set in the 
the name of Jesus Christ uh, by the anointing we have received uh, in Christ Jesus uh, even the revelation uh, of how we are ascended uh, and our seat uh, of enthronement uh, the Bible says uh, the same way the Father has given me a kingdom uh, I have also granted to you a kingdom it says as he ascended uh, he brought captivities captive uh, and he granted gifts to men what are the gifts uh, that he granted unto men the Bible says uh, I have given you a scepter of iron and you shall smash them like a man smashes other vessels the prince of our jurisdiction the prince of our authority is a prince of commanding the Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 5 and verses 10 and now you have become to me kings and priests unto my God and you shall reign on earth the prince of our jurisdiction and the prince of exercising our power is to reign on earth the invaluable proof that we have Christ in us that is demonstrated both by the love we exercise for how shall they know that you belong to me is because of the love that I have given to you also the other dimension of exercising the power of God is demonstrating is demonstrating that power the other way of exercising invariable proofs that the Lord is on our side is exercising the authority of God according to the platform of Jesus Christ I want us to lift up a prayer the Bible says in the book of Isaiah 61 that the Lord has anointed me he has poured his spirit upon me he has anointed me to speak the good news to speak the good news to the poor I want you to lift up your voice and begin to exercise the platforms of Jesus Christ according to the pressure of your dominion and authority what are the good news in whose report shall you believe in whose report shall you believe it is time to announce the good news the king has won over diseases over infirmities the king has won what are the good news we bear that because of his grace he who was rich became poor so that in his poverty we can become rich we have the good news that our bank accounts is not what dictates us what we have is not what dictates us our resources are in Christ Jesus the Bible says put your eyes on the things that are not seen for the things that are not seen are permanent I announce in the name of Jesus in this week of invariable proofs that you have good news over your finances you have good news over your health you have good news over your children what are the good news whatever is affecting a generation shall not lead to your children in the mighty name of Jesus some of us have got cases I announce to you good news the Lord is on your side they are verdicts of Zion that dictate the results of the verdicts of the other in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we have good tidings we have good tidings it is in you to announce good tidings over your seasons over your time it is time to announce the days of poverty are over it is time to announce the season of famine is over it is time to announce we are in the days of invariable proofs and Jesus is Lord look at whatever has been sitting on you and announce to it the Bible says and Peter and John met the cripple who has been who was there for 40 years I want you to understand it was a generational issue and when Peter looked at him he says such as we have received such as I have 
I give to you what have we received in the session is the power of resurrection the power to announce good news let everything that was seen to be dead in your life hear the good news that the king lives so you must leave your business must resurrect I love it I love the song we sang on Sunday by my the woman of God Vichy it is time to announce the river come on the things that have been dead it's time to say the king needs therefore I must leave announce good news to situations of your life to the situations of your marriage understand the power of life and the power of death is in your tongue you have the power to announce in to seasons and out of seasons I announce in the name of Jesus in this revival time may yet be hard in your situation the good tidings of the Lord the Lord says it was not dead it was not dead it was so so that the power of God can be demonstrated I announce where you are blighted by the chaos of this world it is time to receive sight some of us have been in process of confusion wondering what is the way forward I speak to you the good news from Zion the headlights of Zion says in whose report shall you believe I have good plans for you plans for your prosperity these are the good news that it is written in scripture that they are good plans to give us a hope and a future I announce in the name of Jesus let the good news of God lift up your heart lift up your soul the Bible says when the expectation of a person is thwarted then the heart is depressed I announce good news over your life good tidings the king lives he is on your side nobody can come against you no power on earth no power in the heavenly presses can be able to suppress you the Bible says I have the keys of death and hate I want to announce to you death has no power over your life he has won the victory the Bible says he has sent me to heal the broken-hearted the word hearing there it speaks the word hearing there in the dictionary it speaks about healing a person who was sick it is a physical healing is a physical curing I don't know who is under the sound of my voice I announce to you it is in the duty lost of our Lord Jesus Christ to heal them that are broken-hearted to heal them that are sick even as we announce that the week of invariable proofs we announce cancer has no power we announce diabetes has no power we release the healing virtue from this altar Michaela Palatos we are seated together with Jesus Christ in the heavenly places above all names any form of a disease any form of a name of a disease it has been healed the Bible says in Isaiah 53 and verses 4 by the stripes we are healed in first Peter chapter 2 and verses 24 by his stripes we are healed we are on the other side of resurrection when the stripes of Jesus are at work I announce in the name of Jesus from the possession of our authority by God there is healing from every infection there is healing from every kind of a bacteria any kind of a disease in the mighty name of Jesus it is time for invaluable proofs wherever you are even if you are online exercise what you could not do the healing power of God is released from the understanding it is for this reason it is in his work 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 duty to heal the sick, to heal the broken hearted. In the book of Isaiah 61 he says ah, to set free the captives, to set free the captives, to set free the captives. Every captive
captivity, every captivity is being broken. The Bible says, and when he went into the heads, he broke the prisons, he broke the graves, and men was seen walking out of every imprisonment. May you be set free, be set free from every captivity, every bolt of any addiction. Let them be broken now in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be freedom where the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. We release liberty. We release liberty from this altar in the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be healing. Let there be setting free of captives in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says he sets liberty. Isaiah 61 the Bible says he sets the captive free. He breaks prisons. He breaks prisons. Let somebody be broken out of a prison. You can lift your faith even for a friend. You can lift your faith even for a talent you can lift your faith the bible says in job 22 the last verse the bible says that he shall announce even to them that are down be thou lifted and they shall be lifted in the mighty name of jesus we stand in the gap and we announce freedom to them that are imprisoned them that are named after us whatever drunkenness whatever immorality whatever idolatry whatever power of witchcraft that was engulfing anyone in your family you have the opportunity to announce and exercise the power of God we rise in his power and in his might and we announce let there be freedom let there be freedom let men be set out out of be set out out of captivity in the mighty name of Jesus out of imprisonment listen to this the work of the believer is to exercise the power of God that is in them I want us to make just two more prayers go to verses 2 61 verses 2 the Bible says I've been making this prayer from the beginning of this year sometime in February the Lord opened my eyes on this scripture and I've been making this prayer the Bible says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord so seasons can be conditioned seasons can be proclaimed you can announce this is the year of my acceptable year for my business it is the year it is an acceptable year for my wedding it is an acceptable year for barrenness to be broken it is an acceptable year to enter profit it is an acceptable year you can make that proclamation then the bible says and a day of vengeance of our lord to comfort all those who mourn this is the same scripture that Jesus read when he was given the Bible when he entered into their synagogue. I believe it should be the book of Luke chapter 4 or Matthew chapter 4 from verses 18. The reason Jesus read this scripture is because this was within his jurisdiction to exercise. It was within what he was doing. He was announcing to them, you see the Messiah you are waiting for? He has come. And this is my duty, my work schedule. This is how I operate. One, to preach the good tidings. That is to announce the good news. Two, to heal the brokenhearted. Three, to, to, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the bride. He even added one. This one is not in the book of Isaiah. Then the Bible says, to set liberty those who are oppressed. Then the next verse, the Bible says, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So it means from the place of our authority, we can turn things around. Let us exercise. The Bible says in your tongue is the power of life and death. I want us for one minute, for one minute. I don't know what is that thing. You see, the man who was healed by John and James, uh, John and Peter, when they were going to the, to the, 
to the church. If you look at the later verses, the Bible says he was there for 40 years. It means a generation. You see, it means when Jesus was going to the temple, he was also passing that man there. But he always kept that one as the place of exercising power for Peter. You know how you're teaching a child something and then unamwekea question. I think every time Jesus passed that man, he said, Peter, and the day Peter came there, he knew it is the acceptable time to exercise power. I want us for one minute to lift up our voices and pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. I announce to the year 2024, it is time for my ministry to explode. I announce the year 2024, it is the time for resolutions and results. I announce the year 2024 must bring me to the place of purpose. You can condition a year. You can condition the remaining part of the year. Lift up your voice wherever you are. We are conditioning the year. We are announcing. We are claiming the acceptable year my father and my god i refuse the year 2024 to be like the years that have passed me by i condition this year i condition this year according to the kairos moment of the lord i announce every day every month of this year every hour of this year must be a year that is bringing result that must be a day an hour that is bringing result the acceptable result the acceptable result in the mighty name of jesus christ father in the name of jesus i declare over your people let this year be the year where generational battles are broken let this year be the year where barriers are broken let this year be the year acceptable ears to break the ceilings the acceptable ear to break protocols the acceptable ear to break limitations in the mighty name of Jesus we condition you the year 2024 is the year of our expansion is the year of our expansion in the mighty name of Jesus let balanceness be broken in the year 2024 every delay every delay that I've stayed for many years in the year 2024 we announce and proclaim every delay must be broken in the mighty name of Jesus Father we bless you and we honor you because unto the Lord who answers prayers shall all flesh come to and this is our faith that you heal us and because you heal us you answer us accept if something has to be acceptable, it must meet three conditions. Romans chapter 12. Let me just show you this. We are not praying. I'm just now adding. And the Lord is going to bless us. Romans chapter 12. I just want to show you something. The Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the masses of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So what are the qualities of acceptability? The Bible says the next verse, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may prove. We are in the, in the, we are in the time of invariable proofs of the existence of Jesus, of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What is good? Good, it means that it is function. So for you to accept something, even from God, these are the measures. If it is God who has brought it, it must be good. Then it must be acceptable. What does the word acceptable mean? It means if I have 10 children, I have 10 people living in my house, and I am blessed with a six bedroom house, it is still not acceptable. Everyone is not sleeping in their room. It is a big house, but everyone is not having their room. Acceptability, it means that the thing we have received, we can accept. We don't have a complaint. If we are believing God for finances, for example, to start a business, you wanted a million shillings, but you have 500,000. While you are giving praises to the Lord, you know the God you prayed, and you said one million. The acceptable amount is one million for that business. I don't know if I am radicalizing you, but this is how I count acceptability to be. Then the, the last thing is that it is in the perfect will of God. Perfect will of God, it means that if I measure it with scripture, it is agreed with God. So if the Lord says that I will bless you, 
in blessings I will bless you. When I measure the blessings I have, I will still ask for more because in blessing, when I am still blessed, I can still be blessed again. One day a woman of God that I love told me something. She said to me, Pastor Ronnie, the day you will be able to believe God even for rent when you still have the rent in your pocket. It is when your faith will have lifted in another level. That when you have money, your faith must not decrease. You must believe God even for the next thing that you need. You don't have to use what you have to finish, then you lift faith again. The perfect will of God is that when you have, as long as you have a need, you will still place the demand in prayer. Father, we thank you and we honor you. In this week of invariable proofs, we open up a portal that my God and my Father that our lives shall have evidences, invariable proofs of the God we have believed. It will be to our enemies like daytime that our God lives. It will be to our friends like daytime our God lives. That our lives shall be expressions, multiple, multifaceted expressions of proofs that our Jesus is alive and he is at work in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed and believed. Amen, amen. I just want to uh, to uh, announce to us that our giving details are portrayed in uh, all our social medias. And if you're here, you can give from the house. May the Lord bless you. We are in the week of invariable proofs. And I tell you, lift up your faith. Lift up your faith. This is time for you to connect your brothers, your sisters, your fathers, your mothers in every any, any of our services, whether it is the morning roll, whether it is the ranch hour, revival times in the evening, whether it is the time of the Bible study, or the midnight cry, connect them. Tell them, if you have anyone who is sick, send them a ring. Tell them, listen to this. Let us lift faith together. And at the end of this week and going forward, our lives shall be demonstrations of the power of God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. And may the Lord watch over you. Amen.